Hey everybody, it's Paul Charchian, Director of Guillotine Leagues for Fantasy Life. The purpose of this video is to help you better understand the waiver wire system within our mobile app. The waiver wire is the magic of Guillotine Leagues. When all these great players hit the waiver wire and you're bidding on them, we can't help you make sure you get everybody you want and everybody you bid on, but we'll make sure you get the right people when you should be getting them because you're going to know how this waiver wire system works and you probably know this if you've been playing for a while on any site the waiver wire systems all have a little bit of nuance to them we're going to talk through exactly how ours works so that you know and you can get the players that you expect also note that we are constantly tweaking our app so that the version of the app that you're looking at right now on my screen might look somewhat different from what you see on yours today, but just know that the underlying logic here is going to be unchanged no matter how much the front end changes and the color schemes change or anything else. The underlying logic that I'm going to be explaining to you will remain intact. Let's start by navigating to the bidding page, and we do that at the bottom of the screen where it says players. It looks like a plus and a minus button. At the top of the screen, you will see the Create Waiver Bid button in the middle of the screen. You'll see some information about your league and your current situation. We'll click the Create Waiver Bid button. Let me direct you to the upper right-hand corner of this page, the Create Bid Group page. It says $1,000. I've got my full $1,000 to spend. and this $1,000 has to last you all year. Do not spend it all in one week. It does not refresh ever. It's never going to go up. Keep the full, keep in mind, you cannot spend that money and think it's going, you're going to get a fresh 1,000 every week. And tapping that $1,000 button, mine says 1,000. If you've spent some years, it'll say less. We'll show you what everybody else, all the, what all the other teams have got for money left. It's the preseason as I'm recording this, so everybody's got $1,000. This page is broken up into three parts. Add primary player. This is the player you most want to get. Add contingency players. This is in case you don't get the first player. We'll talk more about that a little bit later down the road. And then add players to drop. Let's start with add our primary player. We tap the add a player plus symbol. And then I like to sort on the roster percentage because that shows me who's on uh, most rosters. Now, you'll see here Brees Hall's available, and he's the primary guy that I want. I'm going to tap the blue circle to the left of Brees Hall's name, and he shows up as my primary guy. Now, I need to put a bid on Brees Hall. He's a, as I'm recording this, very good player. Uh, going off the board in the first round of most drafts, he's become available after week one due to something. Hmm, maybe... I'll bid around $220 for Brees Hall. So you need to put a bid amount in. And then I need to choose a player to drop. So I'm going to press add a player, and I'm going to choose to drop Jeff Wilson. I do not need him on my roster. And so right now I have a functioning bid group. I've got a player I want to add, Brees Hall, for $220. If I'm the highest bidder, $220, I will get him, and I will drop Jeff Wilson. If he is, if I am not the highest bidder, somebody else bids $221 or more, then I will not drop Jeff Wilson. Now, this is what you want to do. I'm next going to show you what not to do. What if you want more players? I, You would like to have other players that were on that list, like let's say Sam Laporta. So you may be tempted to do what I'm going to show you right now. And again, this is not the right thing to do to get two players out of one bid group because every bid group will only process one transaction. And let me repeat that because it's the most important thing that you can possibly get out of this video. Every bid group will only process one transaction. So Again, I'm going to show you what not to do because I also want Sam Laporta. So I'm going to add Sam Laporta in with a, with here as my secondary player, a contingency bid of $100. And maybe I add another player to drop, thinking that I, would, I might get both, DJ Chark. This will still only ever process one transaction. It will not process two. It will give me Brees Hall if I get him. And if I don't get him, then it will try to give me Sam Laporta for $100. So that's 
This is the wrong way to do this if you want both players. So I'm going to back these out. Back out Sam Laporta by pressing the garbage can. I'm going to back out DJ Chark for a moment. And in a second, I will show you how contingency players work. Okay, so we're going to save this bid as a bid group. Scrolling down to the bottom, you can see Brees Hall, $220, dropping Jeff Wilson. Now, we're going to create another second bid group. My primary player this time is Sam Laporta, because I would really, I'd like, really like to get Sam Laporta. There he is right there on the list. Okay, I mentioned we're willing to spend $100 on Sam Laporta. Now, here's where we start getting into some advanced thinking on this. For the players we need to drop, if the player I most want to drop is Jeff Wilson, I need to add him to the list. But think about this. What if my Brees Hall bid group hit? Then I need to account for a second player that needs to be dropped because Jeff Wilson would have been dropped when I got Jeff uh, when I got Brees Hall. So we're going to add a second player to this list, DJ Chark. Hopefully that makes sense. And this clears the way for us to, again, we're getting one transaction out of each of these bid groups. Hopefully in the first one, we're going to get Brees Hall. Hopefully in this one, we're going to get Sam Laporta. Now, there's another player I want. I'm going to go back to create waiver bid. I'm going to add another primary player. And I'd like to get a little Jordan Love action in this. We'll bid arbitrarily $56 on Jordan Love. Now, I need to have three dropped players because I might just get Brees Hall and I might get Sam Laporta and I might now get Jordan Love. So I'm going to add three players to the list in order. And I've already established Jeff Wilson's a guy I want to get rid of the most, then DJ Chark, and then Boston Scott. Ugh. Okay, there we go. So now I've got three players in to this bid group in case I also get Jordan Love. We're going to save and submit that. You can see my three different bid groups here. Now we're going to create our fourth and really most complex bid group. There are more players that I want to get. I would also like to get... Um, let's go with some George Pickens. He's my favorite of the remaining players. So I'm going to, I'm going to bid $19 on him. But if I don't get George Pickens, I would like to get, have some options for other players like Marquise Hollywood Brown and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Let's start a little Zach Charbonnet while we're at it. So there's my, here are my next set of contingency players. Marquise Brown for $12, Jackson Smith and Jigba for 10 and how about a little Zach Charbonnet will go two bucks. There we go. All right, great. Now, of course, as you could probably tell, George Pickens will be the primary and the system will attempt to give me him first. And if I can't get him, it'll work its way down the list trying to give me the guys in dollar order. Uh, the primary player has to have the largest amount on him. Now let's talk through guys to drop. Now, same thing as before. I still need to drop these guys. So I, Jeff Wilson, need to drop him. DJ Chark, we're going to drop him. Then it was Boston Scott. And now because we could potentially get four different players, I need to add another player in that I could drop, Jahan Dotson. If I were to hit all four of these bid groups, I would ultimately have to drop four players. Probably won't happen. Very unlikely but I need to be ready for those contingencies just in case. And there you can see all four of my bid groups in here, what they look like, exactly like this. That's the core to understanding how bid groups work in our system, guillotineleagues.com and through the mobile app. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. There are thriving Guillotine League communities out there, including on Reddit. You can follow us on Twitter, at GLChop, and I am at Paul Charchian. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a great time winning your bids on the waiver wire.